all the years the great animal rescue continued at Kariba, few zebra had been found marooned on the temporary islands. It was assumed that most herds had made their escape from the lake area as the first flooding began. This was just as well, for the zebra performs badly in water and has a very poor sense of direction. However, this was one small herd which didn't make an early getaway. Zebra are too big to be netted, and as they possess little stamina, they were stampeded until they tired and could easily be captured. two poles attached to a net, forming a rough and ready machila. They were carried, 400 kilograms dead weight, to the waiting armada of boats. Noah, some animals have died during capture from shock, it was thought. Then it was discovered that overexposure to the burning heat of the sun was usually the most likely cause, and so it became routine to splash cooling water over them at every opportunity.
Before human settlement became widespread, each herd numbered many hundreds of head. It's a timid but inquisitive animal, and always pauses to look back after it has galloped off from being disturbed. inquisitive nature, so it seemed, persuaded it to delay its departure, perhaps to see what its rescuers would get up to next. But most couldn't get back into the bush fast enough. team's time was spent in actually catching and transporting the animals to safety. The remainder was taken up with reconnaissance, planning courses of action and preparation. Whenever possible, there were brief periods for rest in between each action. A curious creature with a curious family name, Arictidopodidae, the aardvark. It's more commonly known as the ant bear. For food, it digs into termite mounds and gathers the ants with its 45 centimeter tongue. Without crackers, holes remain holes. Without crackers, many ant bears and other small lives would have drowned to the tune of rushing water. He more than earned his keep on this job, indicating when an ant bear was in a hole and in which direction it was heading. This was vital to know, for an ant bear can dig ahead of three men working with spades. Crackers, ducks and legs and sausage body were a great advantage.
In an emergency, Rupert Fothergill could cope with the determined and stubborn ant bear with more positive physical results than crackers. But it wasn't a job he enjoyed very often, especially as an ant bear weighs about the same as a full-grown man. of the Operation Noah boats. The weed is independent of the land, thriving comfortably on the highly fertile water of the lake. Separate bunches group together to form vast floating rafts, sometimes several kilometers across. In time it becomes less abundant as the lake water clears of silt. great rafts and the smaller ones drift away and straggle across the main body of the lake. But it dislikes open water and unless it's wind blown inshore again, it dies. Often the boats had to thrust through a 45 centimeter thick layer of weed with frequent halts for choked propeller shafts to be cleared and a cooling swim, if one could call it that. day digging for ant bears and battling against the weed in the scorching Zambezi Valley heat. An early camp supper and a refreshing cleanup never came amiss. morning with a bit of luck 
perhaps some fish. The Shona and Matabili tribes people consider the scales of the pangolin, or scaly anteater, a powerful medicine. It is generally a nocturnal creature and is not often seen. The rains of another year had passed and soon the last grasses were quickly vanishing from the remaining overpopulated islands. Adult buffalo, a dark mass sweeping across from one end of an island to another, were still finding enough to eat, reaching up high to browse off the trees. They could look after themselves and in the end swim to safety. But there was no such hope for the calves. They had to be helped. When a buffalo herd went galloping away, the youngsters tended to fall behind. Unafraid, they would scamper off when approached, high-spirited, and apparently enjoying the fun of the chase. But when they tired, the brave little chaps would turn on their pursuers. This tactic simplified capture, of course, even with a big yelling. by experienced hunters to be the most dangerous animal when provoked, these were darted and taken to the mainland to protect the young until the rest of the herd swam across. transported to Rhodesian game parks. While a buffalo, a ruminant with four stomach cavities, was under sedation, a tube had to be inserted into the paunch to release the accumulated gases of fermentation. Without this precaution, the beast would choke to death or even explode. of another island or the mainland, 
being able to swim eight kilometers or more. But the rangers found it necessary to remove them as their presence threatened the trapped small again and the rangers themselves. A cage trap was suitably baited and once occupied, in this case by a young lioness, was draped with a tarpaulin for safety's sake and to spare the lion from unnecessary interference. From small dogs, for example. Now dogs have always chased cats, but cats are cats, and not, so far as crackers was concerned, lions or leopards. So despite the protective bars of the cage, he didn't stay around for very long. shore, the gate of the cage was opened by ropes hauled from a safe distance, and the beautiful lioness performed a graceful exhibition class dive. Ant bear and antelope, birds, badgers and buffalo, lion, leopard, lizard, Warthog and Zephyr. Many of every species have been saved or saved themselves from the one-way tide flooding the valley. But while all this was going on, the men of Operation Noah had also been dealing with the bigger game.